Warning, tuning your vehicle can be a dangerous activity and there is substantial risk involved. The dangers include but are not limited to permanently damaging your vehicle, injury or death to yourself or other people, damaging personal property due to paying attention to a laptop while driving. This video is intended for educational purposes only. Before altering the calibration of your vehicle, you should verify it is in proper working and mechanical condition. Have a working basis of knowledge of how your vehicle works and how the components interrelate and understand how your tuning software works. Bottom line, you and only you are responsible for making your own decisions as well as accepting the consequences of those decisions. I cannot be held accountable for your actions. All right, fellas. Um, I realized I did a really terrible job explaining how to account for or solve for shifting at wide open throttle. And the reason why is because you always have to lead the shift time. So if we look in the editor, here's what we have. This is from the normal wide open uh, miles per hour and RPMs. And in all cases, I have mine set to shift peak RPM at 6,900 RPMs. And all of these shift RPMs are really low. And then the corresponding miles per hour is going to be low compared to that 6,900 RPM shift point. So we need to account for that lag or that delay. And so that's what this calculator is for. So the first thing we're going to do is plug in our observed wide open shift numbers here. And when I say observed, where we want to get this is you can see this top graph here. We have this yellow line is the um, current gear and I'm going to move this cursor right to where it hits four and then maybe back off till it's the last frame for three. And then I'm going to capture these guys. And I want that because I, this is where the commanded shift point is. And so you can see the line jump up here. But I want to get that last moment of what was happening in third gear. So I can get that, that torque converter slip and all those other variables kind of calculated in. So you see 97 point or 95.7 and 6453. So this is where these numbers came in here. And we could put in 0.7 if you like decimals is fine. And so now we're going to say, well, what is it actually being commanded at? Now, for example, this isn't the same, but um, we would plug in this guy here for the two, three, or the three, four shift, whatever it may be. Just grab this number and plop it in here, whatever it is. And then we're going to say, well, I actually want to shift at 6,900 RPMs. So it says, well, you're going to take about 200 RPMs to complete the shift. So we're going to subtract that off, and then we're going to come up with this 6,697. And then we're going to back calculate the miles per hour. And so this 6697 should correspond to 99 miles per hour. This is the way that I did my car just because it's not a dedicated track car. Um, I want to keep the RPMs mild and tame just for, you know, driving around on the street, not trying to rebuild engines. If you have some hardcore track car, and, you know, the size of the tire and the gearing and you want to match those shifts up to get whatever you want right at the, the finish line, whatever the case may be, you might need to solve for miles per hour, which is what this one is. It's the exact same thing, only we're calculating the shift lead time in terms of miles per hour. And then we're back calculating the RPM. So choose your weapon. Most of you probably should be using this. And then we're just going to take these numbers here. And then we're going to plug them back in. So I would say, well, you know, my two, three shift, three, four, I think we were actually dealing with, we'll make it 6697 and miles per hour is 99. So, you know, we'll put it uh, 99 or whatever the case may be. Now these are made up numbers, so I actually don't want to save those, but whether you do from here or here, it's the same, just copy the, the numbers in green. But remember, you're going to need to come into here. Oh, these are metric. That's why they look odd. All right. So once you do that, though, you still will need to make sure that you update this number to match. Um, otherwise, it may shift funky and it may not be totally reliable. And if you have also done the tap up, tap down modifier like I like, 
optional, you don't have to make sure you update those last three cells. And then the same thing for the tap up, tap down, miles per hour and RPM. Basically, you're going to need to update all of these wide open areas. So the first time you do this, it, you probably get pretty close. The only, the, the holdup is when we look in here at the commanded shift um, miles per hour versus RPM, we don't know if this relationship is accurate. Somebody probably dropped those in or factory tune is probably spot on. But either way, if you have a new torque converter and you're just kind of guessing, the first time it tries to back calculate the miles per hour from the RPM may be a little bit sketchy. So this is probably something you will have to do two or three times and just observe how it's going. And then you may get to a point where, hey, you know, it, it is shifting at, let's say, 6,600. And um, we're actually at 94. And so, you know, now it's getting a lot smaller, the, the lead time or whatever. And so then we'd say, well, what I can't remember what that one was. But either way, you may have to iterate and do a couple times to get this, just so this relationship between the RPM and miles per hour tightens up a little bit. So I apologize. Uh, first time I didn't really explain that very well. In fact, I did a terrible job. So accept my apologies. Uh, this spreadsheet calculator I'm going to put also out on my Google Drive. So follow the link in the video description to grab it if you so want. And if you have any questions, again, uh, feel free to hit me up. Anyway, onwards and upwards, my dudes.